In this video, we are discussing selecting the best number of components for linear discriminant analysis. In abbreviated form, we call it as LDA. So here we'll be discussing into details with some sample program and also we'll be discussing what is the difference between PCA and LDA and where the PCA will be applied that is our unsupervised learning and where this LDA will be applied that is our supervised learning. So here is the demonstration for you. We have already studied that how we can reduce the dimensionality of the feature set using the PCA. That is uh, reducing the dimensionality means we are considering the principal components or principal feature variables for the model training and testing. But here we will be discussing, we will be studying another very important dimensionality reduction technique that is known as linear discriminant analysis or LDA. But at first we should discuss that what is the difference between PCA and LDA and how they are differing in this respect. PCA versus LDA and here you know that both PCA and LDA are linear transformation techniques. However, PCA is an unsupervised where LDA is supervised dimensionality reduction technique. Now, what is the supervised and unsupervised? We know that whenever we are having the data set is having the output column, then it is known as supervised. When the data set is having no output variable or output column, outcome column, then it is known as unsupervised uh, data set. So PCA has no concern with the class levels. That, that means it is not varying with the, with the output column. In simple words, PCA summarizes the feature set without relying on the output. PCA tries to find the directions of the maximum variance of the data set. In a large feature set, there are many features that are merely duplicate of the other features or have a high correlation with the other features. So such features that are basically redundant can be ignored and should be deducted and should be discarded. And such features are basically redundant and can be ignored. And the role of PCA is to find such highly correlated or duplicate features and to come up with a new feature set that are a minimum correlation between the features or in other words, the feature set with maximum variance between the features and those features will be taken care of in the final model design. And since the variance between the features does not depend upon the output, so therefore PCA does not take the output levels into the consideration into the account. So now let us go for uh, this LDA. So now what is happening in case of LDA? So unlike PCA, LDA tries to reduce the dimensions of the feature set while retaining the information that discriminates output classes and LDA tries to find a decision boundary around the each cluster of a class and then projects the data points to a new dimensions in a way that the clusters are as separated from each other as possible and the individual elements within a cluster are as close to the centroid of the cluster as possible. So here this LDA, mind, mind this word very carefully, is applicable for the supervised learning data set. The new dimensions are ranked on the basis of their ability to maximize the distance between the clusters and minimizes the distance between the data points and within a cluster their centroids and their new dimensions from the linear discriminants of the feature set. So now let us go for one LDA implementation using Python's scikit-learn uh, model. So here we are having the required importing libraries, we are having importing numpy as np, import pandas as pd, now importing the data set. So here we are having one data set that is the irish.csv. We know that irish.csv is having uh, five columns, we are having the sepal len sepal with peter len peter with and species as the output column and rest four are the input feature variables and it has got 150 number of rows, four, uh, 50 rows for setosa, 50 rows for versicolor and 50 rows for virginica uh, species names. So here we are having this print data set dot shape and then data set dot head. So you can find that if I execute this code, if I execute this code, so the my uh, models are getting imported and then the respective first five records are getting printed and the data set shape is 150 by 5. 
So this particular idish.csv you can easily download from the internet. We are having multiple different sources where this idish.csv file is available. So I've kept this one in a certain folder and I have uh, read that one using read csv. Let us go for the data processing. So x is equal to data set, data set dot columns colon 4. That means it will be taking only the first four columns 0, 1, 2, 3 number column. So that means only the input feature variables. And y is equal to data set, data set dot columns 4 colon. So here it is taking only the last column that is the fourth one and that is the output column. So now from sklearn dot model selection import train test split. So we are splitting this particular one. So 20% records will be going for test set and rest 80% records will be going for trend set and random state is equal to 0. So it will here I put this seed value as 0. So irrespective of the platform of the uh, machine that means irrespective of the architecture or operating system it will always split our 150 number of records 20% for the test and 80% for the trend and the same records will be going for test and trend irrespective of the architecture of the machine when the random state is equal to 0. For random state is equal to other value, the splitting will be done in another combination. So here we are having x train, x test, y train, y test. Now we are going for the feature scaling. So again we are going for the standard scalar object SC and then SC dot fit transform x train and SC dot transform there is a x test. So we are having this one as standardized x train and standardized x test. Now performing this LDA. So I'm having one planning that uh, let me execute this uh, program without doing this LDA. Okay. So let me do this one at first, then you'll be coming back. So I'm just executing this one. So it has got executed. So I'm having this X and Y. I didn't print that one. Obviously I can print it if you require. So I can go for this. I can print this X. You can see that how the things are taking shape. So that is the here we're having this first 50. I'm going for this head. So if I go for this, you see, we're having this first one. So then I shall go for y dot head. So it is the species column. You can find this one. Now here we're having this x train x test and y train y test splitting. So that is the splitting I've done. So now I've done the scaling. So I've done the scaling. So now after doing this scaling, I'm just going to print this x underscore train. So if I execute this one, you can find this is my respective content. And if you go for this if you go for this, so it is printing the respective x test. Okay, now without doing this, performing this LDA, let me execute this one. So here I'm using this model that is a random forest classifier. In other videos, I've discussed this random forest classifier into details. We can watch that one. So now I'm going for this. I want to evaluate the model performance. So I, using this confusion matrix, I'm just calculating this model performance. You can find that the accuracy here is our 0.93. So here the accuracy is our 0.93. You can easily find this one. So that is a 93% accurate and you know that we're having all 11 in the test set, all 11 setosa has got detected correctly and all 13 versicolor has got detected correctly and four virginica detected correctly and two detected wrongly. So that is my confusion matrix output. So now if we do the LDA, so here we are going for this LDA n components is equal to one. So here we are doing this LDA and LDA dot fit transform here we are having this X train and Y train I'm passing as and then on this LDA transform I'm just applying this X test so that it will give me the uh, what should I say the respective X test after doing this LDA transformation you can easily find that and then I shall execute it now I shall go for this model train so here you see it was previous case where we are having this one that is without doing any LDA without doing any LDA so here we are having 
93 percent accuracy, but here after doing this LDA, if you go for this, you can find that the accuracy is 1, that is 100 percent accuracy we are expecting here. Why? Because you see all the versicolor, virginica and everything has got versicolor, virginica and setosa, all the three different uh, classes have got detected correctly and that is the purpose of this LDA. So using LDA you can find that my model performance was 93.33%. Uh, so now the model performance has become your 100%. Because the using this LDA, I've, I've done this, I've done the dimensionality deduction in supervised learning. So I have considered only those respective feature attributes which are really decisive for this output. And as this LDA is increasing the efficiency of my model, so obviously you can find the idea that why this, why we usually use this NDA, uh, LDA in our respective program. So you can find that like PCA, we have to pass the value of the N components and here you can have this N components, see here, N components is this. So this N component parameter of the LDA which refers to the number of linear discriminants that we want to retrieve. In this case we have set this N components to 1 since we first want to check the performance of our classifier with a single linear discriminant and finally we execute the fit and transfer methods to actually retrieve the linear discriminants. So in this particular example, we have given you the idea that what is the purpose of LDA and how LDA is differing from our PCA. Thanks for watching this video.